Hey coders, it's Chris here. Welcome to part two of Parse User Accounts and Management. In the last lesson, we went through the iOS developer's guide and we talked through the users section. I showed you guys how to use the PF user class and that it has a username, password, email field. We went through signing up, logging in, and a whole bunch of other stuff. If you haven't checked it out, I recommend that you click on the upper right corner right now and it's gonna open a brand new window and go through that video first because in this video, we're going to go straight into implementing some of those things that we talked about in that lesson. So what I'm going to do in Xcode is create sort of a sign up flow. It's going to have a field for username, password, and it's going to have a button to sign up the user. And in the parse demo that we created when we started this parse series, you're going to be able to see a users table with all of the signups. So let's open up our Xcode project and try this out. So let's open up the XC workspace. And in here, uh, what we worked on here last was, looks like local data store. That's right. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of this right now. Let's get rid of this code here. And this is basically what you would start with if you started a brand new project. It's an mtviewcontroller.swift. And in the storyboard, we also don't have anything here. See, I can double click this empty space zoom out to show you guys there's nothing here. And we're gonna be adding some stuff here. So actually, let me get rid of some of these tabs. So, okay, first of all, we're going to add a text field. It's gonna be for the username. And I'm gonna use this property here called placeholder text. I'm just gonna put username in there instead of putting a label on the outside. And drag another one there, uh, make this placeholder text password, but we're also going to want to enable secure text entry down here. And that's going to obscure the text as they type it. So the password won't be visible. Let's also add a button right there. And let's call this uh, sign up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down command, click all three, because I'm going to click this stack view button going to put them all into a neat little stack view like this. You can see all of the elements are now enclosed in this guy. And the stack view is just an easy way to lay them out on top of each other. See, because I can put some spacing, I can indicate, let's say, 30, and it's going to space them all 30 apart. And all I have to do is position the stack view on my view. So let's horizontally uh, and vertically center that in our view. Let's update frames so we can see it there. So, you know, I can play with this some more, but the main point is that I want to show you guys this in action. So I'm not going to uh, do too much to the UI. I'm going to go into the interface, the assistant editor, sorry, by clicking this button up here. And I'm going to add some outlets for these guys. So let's hold down control and drag this over here and make sure it says outlet. And I'm going to make this the username text field that do the same thing for the password hold down control do that password text field and then I'm going to create an action for the button so when they tap that button I want to execute some code I'm gonna hold down control and drag this out down here but above that last curly brace because that last curly brace is the end of the class and you can't put methods outside of the class so let go Instead of outlet, change this to action because we want to create an action method. And for the type, I'm just going to choose UI button down there. And let's call this sign up tapped. So in here, we're going to execute some code uh, to do get the username and password and create a user. OK, so let's try some stuff here. Let's print a statement here called tapped and let's set a breakpoint so that when we run the app and we tap the button, it's going to pause it here. So I'm going to press Command R to run the app right now. It's going to launch it pretty quickly. So we see our little basic UI here. And let's click Sign Up first. So it's going to hit that breakpoint. Um, basically, in the console, what I want to check is popfuser.current. Uh, current user, current user, I think all lowercase. Check this method to see what's in there. Okay, so apparently maybe I got the method wrong. So let's go back to the documentation. If you remember from yesterday, current user, uh, yes, it's capital U. So when you want to 
check for the current user. Let's switch this to Swift code. Uh, you can use the class method current user on the PF user class, and you'll be able to check if it's nil or not. So if it's not nil, that means you do have a user object and the guy's logged in. But if it is nil, then that means that you should probably show the sign up or login screen because that person isn't logged in. Now, the thing is, we have in our parse app, if I go to the app settings, we have anonymous users enabled. So current users, uh, current user is always going to have a user object. It's never not going to be nil. So let's try that again here. PO PF user dot current user with a capital U this time. Okay, so it is nil. I'm a little bit surprised about that because I thought in the documentation under anonymous users that it said it wouldn't be nil. Okay, so maybe I misunderstood that a little bit, but essentially if we checked current user and it was nil, so we do get the nil, that means that the user isn't logged in or they don't have an account. So if you want to allow anonymous users to your app, what you would do here is create an anonymous user. Once you find out that the guy isn't logged in, you could create an anonymous user like this using this code snippet here. Uh, I think I read it wrong right here. When you enable automatic anonymous user creation at application startup, the PF user current user will never be nil. So I guess this is something that we have to enable right here like this in the application did finish launching with options. This is in the app delegate.swift and we would basically enable automatic user. We would do that. Let's go back to standard view. We would do that right here. We would say something like PF user dot enable automatic user and enables automatic creation of anonymous users. So that's what we would do. And if you did that, then the PF current user will never be nil because an anonymous user will automatically be created and assigned to current user. But as it is in our current application, what I want to do here is create a new user. Uh, so I'm going to say let user equals PF user, create a brand new user object, and I'm going to set the username is equal to username text field dot text. And this is an optional string. So we can actually do some checking first, uh, but let me unwrap this. So right here, let's say, uh, I'm not going to actually do it, but we can say check that username text field isn't empty to do check that password text field isn't empty. And that's using a simple if statement. You can check the text property, see if it's either an empty string or if it's nil. Uh, and if it is, then you would just use the return keyword. Uh, but before that, you would probably display some um, error message to let the user know that they have to fill that out. Okay, and I would say user dot password equals password text field dot text. I'm going to unwrap that and assume that we did the checking up here and assume that that's not nil. And then we are going to call user dot sign up in background with block like that. So I'm going to double tap this to expand the block of code. Uh, there is a result, true or false. Let's just call that result and let's call this an error. And then inside here, when it returns, we can check if error is nil, then uh, we can also check and result equals true. Then user was successfully created and then you can transition them onto your home page or you know the first screen where a signed in user would see else to do check error message and display the reason to the user maybe using a label or something like that so i'm going to set a breakpoint right here so when we actually sign up a user we're going to see i'm going to remove this breakpoint and there's one more thing i'm going to show you how to do is with text fields. So when we tap on this text field, the keyboard kind of slides up. And if it doesn't slide up, all you need to do is go up here for the simulator under hardware, um, under keyboard, you might have this checked on. 
So if you do have it checked on, just check it off, uh, or you can just press Command K and toggle the keyboard if you need to. But uh, if you disconnect the hardware keyboard, like I just showed you, um, this will usually be fine. But tapping outside of the text field doesn't dismiss the keyboard, right? And that's usually the behavior that we want. So the way we do that is just override another method in the view controller called touches began right here. And when that happens, we want to dismiss the keyboard. So we would say, uh, username text field dot resign first responder. Okay, and if the user was editing the username text field and then tapped outside, then this would get rid of the keyboard. However, if the user was editing the password text field, we also have to handle that case. So let's also resign first responder on that. It doesn't hurt just to call both. Uh, so let's try that out. So now I'm in here. If I tap outside, it shrinks the keyboard. If I go into the password field and I tap outside, it retracts the keyboard as well. Okay, so let's actually try to sign up. So I'm gonna say Chris is named there. And for this, I'm just going to use any random password. Actually, it probably should be something that I will remember. So I'm just gonna say one, two, three, four. And I'm gonna click sign up. Don't use that as a real password, by the way. <laughs> okay, so here it has called sign up in background with block and it's come into the block of code after it has sent that request. So let's see if it goes into here, right? If error is nil, I can actually see down here already that error is nil and the result is true. So it's gonna come into here. And then let's just let this run. And then if we go back to our parse data store, let's go back to core, let's refresh it. Uh, you can already see user here. So before we only had contact, now that we're working with users, the user store gets created and you can see that it's in here, that user that just signed up, you see that the password is hidden and the email is undefined. You can't actually edit passwords like this because it's secure. And session has also been created, role has been created. If you had some complex rules for how users can access different things, you can make use of the role class and the session class, I haven't read too much about this, but it looks like it tracks for a user uh, what they're doing and what they did in a particular session. Okay, so that's a simple sign up flow. Let me quickly show you what login would look like. It's actually a very, very simple change. So essentially, um, after the user has signed up, that user object automatically gets assigned to pfuser.currentuser and it gets cached on the local device. So what you probably should do when the app launches is you should check pfuser.currentuser. If it's not nil, that means the user has recently logged in or signed up. So you don't need to present that registration screen uh, or a login screen. You can just bring them right into the app. But if you're checking pfuser.currentuser and it's nil, that means that the user has never used it before or they recently signed out. So in that case, you want to present the registration screen. For us, we're not gonna do that check because I just want to show you how login would work. I'm gonna change this text to login instead. And then very simply inside the view controller, I'm just gonna assume that we did check pfuser.currentuser and it was nil. And so that means that the, either the user has never signed up, never logged in, or he recently logged out. So we, we're gonna show a login screen because I just wanna show you how easy that that would be to do that. So I'm just gonna comment out this sign up method and we're actually also going to comment this out. All of this, let me just undo that. All of this is sign up code. So if you were to sign up a new person, sign up new user, this is what you would do. Uh, this bracket, be careful, this bracket is also part of this sign up block. So if you were to log in a user instead, then all you would do, let's just double check the uh, documentation here, logging in. See, very simply, you call the class method login with username in background, right? So again, I'm gonna assume that, you know, you do some checking up here, that the username text field isn't empty and the password text field isn't empty. And then you would just go pfuser.login with username and password in background. This is the one we want. So you have a place to specify the username, which we would go, username 
text field dot text. And I'm going to unwrap that because we know it's not nil, right? Because we checked it up here, or you would have checked it up there. Remove password, text field dot text, unwrap that, double click this block of code that executes when it comes back. So this returns this PF user parameter is an optional type. So it either returns nil if for some reason maybe the password was wrong, username couldn't be found, but they couldn't log in at the end of the day. And PF user would be nil. So I'm just gonna use user error like that. And then inside here you would basically check if let well let's check if error uh, let's check users first if let logged in user equals user so inside here user object isn't nil else user object is nil check error parameter so then in here you can you know user logged in successfully transition into home page or something like that home screen whatever that experience may be so that's basically all there is to it in this lesson we looked at how to perform a sign up we looked at how to perform a login the only thing we haven't done is on app launch check the pfuser.current user property or method to see what the status is you know, if the guy was logged in, if the guy is, you know, logged out or not registered, basically to check that status and determine which form we should show, whether we should show the sign up form and the login form, uh, or just bring them straight into the app if they're already logged in. So now that you know how to do these two things, in the future when we build some more apps together, um, I can very easily incorporate login, sign up, and user accounts. Please give the video a thumbs up and please share it with anyone who you think could use this tutorial. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. <music>